So this is a National 4, National 5 chemistry lesson. We are on the topic of bonding and today's lesson is going to be about diatomic elements. So the aim is to understand what the diatomic elements are and why they are formed. Your success criteria for this lesson, I would hope that you'd be able to state all seven of the diatomic molecules or the diatomic elements, describe a way to remember the diatomic elements and to explain why these diatomic molecules are formed from the elements. So let's get into our lesson about diatomic molecules. So covalent bonding in hydrogen. Many non-metal elements such as hydrogen exist as simple diatomic molecules. Diatomic means two atoms. Di means two, atomic means atoms. So when we talk about a diatomic molecule, we're talking about a molecule made only of two atoms. And hydrogen is one of these diatomic molecules and it's bonded by a covalent bond. So how is this bond formed in hydrogen? Well, each hydrogen atom has one electron in its outer shell and this outer shell is shell number one and shell number one can only have two electrons in it. That means that each hydrogen needs one more electron in its outer shell in order to complete the outer shell and achieve what it wants, which is to be stable. So what happens is that these hydrogen atoms share their electron with another hydrogen atom and form a covalent bond. As a result, you can see that each hydrogen now it has two electrons in its outer shell. This shared pair of electrons forms a covalent bond and it creates a diatomic molecule of hydrogen. Now, there are seven other elements on the periodic table that form diatomic molecules similar to hydrogen. And you need to be able to remember all seven of them. And what we mean again by a diatomic molecule is when two of the same type of atom bond together to form a molecule. Diatomic. Di for two, atomic for atoms. Now the seven diatomic molecules are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. And whenever these elements um, react with anything and we have to write a chemical formula for them, we can't just write the symbol. We need to write that there are two of the atoms. So we have H2 for hydrogen, N2 for nitrogen, O2 for oxygen, F2 for fluorine, Cl2 for chlorine, Br2 for bromine and I2 for iodine. Now, if you've got a periodic table handy, um, you might notice that a lot of those elements are in the same group. So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, they all end in INE, and all the elements that end in INE are halogens in group seven. So what we're gonna look at now is each of the diatomic molecules and how they form covalent bonds, because even though they're all made of two atoms, the number of bonds is different for each one. So we'll go through each one in turn. So the first one is hydrogen, H2, and that's what we've already seen. In this case, each hydrogen um, has one electron in its outer shell. That shell is the first electron shell, which needs two in order for it to be completed and make the hydrogen atom stable. So in order for both hydrogen atoms to become stable, they share one electron each, giving each of them two electrons in their outer shell and providing stability. Nitrogen is perhaps the most complicated one. Nitrogen as an element, it has five electrons in its outer shell and the outer shell for nitrogen can hold eight electrons. So that means each nitrogen needs another three electrons in order for it to obtain eight overall. And so that means that each nitrogen shares three of its electrons with the other nitrogen. 
So you can see in the overlapped part of a nitrogen molecule, there are three crosses from the nitrogen on the right hand side and three circles from the nitrogen on the left hand side. If you look at a circle, a full circle for each nitrogen, you can see that each one has six electrons from the shared part and two electrons that are just on it. And so if we're drawing a nitrogen molecule, we need to draw three lines because there are three covalent bonds forming between that. Oxygen is next. Now oxygen has six electrons in its outer shell, which means that each oxygen needs another two in order to get that full outer shell of eight electrons. And so each oxygen shares two electrons with each other. So if you look in that central part where there are overlapping, you can see two uh, blue circles and two X's. That means that there are four electrons in total that are shared, and then each oxygen has another four that belong just to it, which gives each oxygen eight electrons in its outer shell, making each oxygen stable. Fluorine, well, fluorine um, has seven electrons in its outer shell. It means it only needs one in order to get a full outer shell and be stable. And what it does is each fluorine shares one, and that brings the total number of electrons for each fluorine up to eight. So there's only one covalent bond formed in fluorine. Chlorine is another halogen that has seven electrons in its outer shell. So it does exactly the same thing as fluorine. Each chlorine shares one electron, which adds to the seven electrons that it already has, giving each chlorine eight electrons. So chlorine has one covalent bond. Bromine is another um, halogen and has seven uh, electrons in its outer shell. So just like fluorine and chlorine, it shares one electron from each bromine atom, giving each bromine atom now eight electrons in their outer shell and forming one covalent bond. And iodine, just like the other ones, seven electrons each, so it needs one. They share one each in the middle, forming one covalent bond and giving each iodine um, eight electrons. So we can remember hydrogen forms one covalent bond, nitrogen forms three covalent bonds, oxygen forms two covalent bonds, and fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine as halogens all form one covalent bond. Now there is a way to remember the diatomic elements, but what I would like you to do is, if you're at home, if you have access to a periodic table or the data booklet, to see is there a way that you can remember the seven diatomic elements. You can come up with it, you can pause the video to have a go at that. But maybe you've unpaused the video or maybe you decided I didn't want to do that activity. Uh, but uh, this is some ways, Hinklebroff for hydrogen, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, bromine, oxygen and fluorine. Hinklebroff, don't know if that's that easy. Um, or you can remember the number seven plus hydrogen, because it helps because there are seven diatomic elements and most of them make the number seven on the periodic table. So nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and then down to iodine. That occupies six and then we have hydrogen. So the number seven plus hydrogen is another way of remembering it. And that's how I remember it. So H and off and down. H and off and down. It's another way you can do it. H and off and down. So hopefully what you have learned is that you'll be able to say the seven diatomic molecules, that you will hopefully have a way of being able to remember the diatomic molecules. So seven and hydrogen or H and off and down. 
and you'll hopefully be able to explain why diatomic molecules are formed in that they want to have that um, outer shell of eight electrons and they can do so by sharing a number of electrons with one another. Remembering that hydrogen uh, shares one electron each, nitrogen shares three electrons each, oxygen two electrons each, and all the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine share one electron each. So that has been the, um, the diatomic molecules. So we've now got some recap questions. So can you tell me what the term diatomic molecule means? A diatomic molecule is a molecule consisting of only two atoms. Can you give three examples of diatomic elements? Well, the through, uh, there are seven, so you could have had any of hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And this is one where I don't have the picture to show you, but I'd like you to have a go at drawing the diagram of how the outermost electrons of oxygen atoms form covalent bonds. <laughs> 